Howdy ho! Number one, I'm pretty, okay? That has a lot, and I, I don't mean that to be conceited. I'm being very matter of fact. Being pretty gets you a lot of privilege. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you can get away with a lot if you're pretty. Like how hypocrisy you are, oh my god. Hey everybody, what up, girl gang? It's so freaking good to see you. It's Friday Eve. I've never been so excited for a Friday Eve, I don't think, in my life. Hey, this week has been a really long month. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, it's almost over now. Oh, thank God. Good to be here. Good to see you guys. We have a lot to get through tonight. A, li a little bit of a catch-up since we haven't been live, you know? The opposite of pretty. Well, exactly. Exactly. From the inside out. Absolutely rotten. Horrible. Just horrible. Hey, Oceana Song, what up, girl? <laughs> oh, I don't have Twitter. Let the info come out. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> what info? Oh my God. Yes, it's February 22nd, aka one year ago today was the BBJ rescue. Here's the thing you guys didn't know anything about it until February 23rd. So, for tonight, we're going to pretend like you guys don't know about it still. And tomorrow, for our Friday night extravaganza, we will, of course, be celebrating the one-year emancipation of BBJ and the freeing, the rescue of BBJ. That is for tomorrow. Yes, bloop indeed. Tomorrow, you guys, we are going to be taking a trip down memory lane. We already decided we are going to be re-watching one of the best rage streams we've ever, ever had in this community. Uh, the stream where she found out who got... BBJ, right? <laughs> so that's the plan for tomorrow. We will, of course, be starting with whatever she gives us to work with real time. But uh, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a real good time. A real good time. A lot of bloops, uh, a lot of but stuff, and a lot of cheese. We got bloops tomorrow as well, all right? So that is for tomorrow. One year ago tonight, y'all knew nothing. You pretend like tonight you know nothing again. Hmm? Where is your scat man, Pondu? Thank you for the super chat. I love that my husband knows when FFG is live because I Tina Belcher twerked in the intro. I love that so much. I love it the most. <laughs> Thanks, girl. Um, uh, you can't wait for the rescue. I know. I've been really hyped for tomorrow's stream, too. Uh, and I've never been so excited for a Friday in my life. Tomorrow is going to be mwah, chef's kiss of a night. But tonight is going to be great, too. We have a lot to get to tonight. A lot of laughs. A lot of... Uh, outrage it's a, it's a, the whole spectrum of emotions tonight so yeah it's gonna be great let bloop today too oh well, i mean we can bloop every day langello nothing stops us from blooping today but the bloopity bloop will be tomorrow <laughs> shabbat shalom thank you so much for the super sticker i appreciate it uh ah the t on twitter the t on twitter that uh 
Okay, I'm not all caught up yet on Twitter for the day. Here's what I've seen so far from Mo on Twitter today. But did I ever go to jail? No, can't say that I did. <clears throat> so the tea that I saw already today on Twitter uh, was about Chantal. Let's say one of the videos we're going to watch tonight, there's like now Arabic subtitles on the video. And she has joined with some what seems to be like a group of creators. And it's like they they exchange sub. You know, it's like sub for sub type thing. So she's increasing her subs apparently with this group and somebody in this group, if you guys remember way back when salad was found to be in some woman's chat, not the gamer woman, but the woman who was like just speaking, there was like a woman speaking in Arabic. I don't know if you guys remember, this was like way, way back. Apparently she's in that group. And yeah, there's some kind of link there. Chantal is now in the group. That's why those subtitles were were put on the video, that housewifey video, and with the Quran, it's it's like a sub for sub thing, and that's how she's apparently getting herself to a hundred uh, k. Yikes, Ricky, it's Julianne. Thank you for the super chat. Bambi is excited for tomorrow. Ah, yes, to your Bambi. Uh, the bloop was. I mean, it's an iconic stream. BBJ got her freaking life back, and we got one of the best live uh, raid streams we've ever had from Chantal. So yeah, that's it's. A win-win. Doctor Now is the goat. Thank you for the super chat. Lil House Fun Money. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Doctor Now. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Happy Friday Eve to you. Performative. Mm, Kimberlina, good word. So performative. So insulting. So fucking outrageous. This woman has just no shame at all. Lisa Bear, hey girl, thank you for the super chat. Buy your spite house, girl. Thank you, Lisa Bear. I appreciate it. The bloop heard round the world. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, all right, here is the plan, okay, for tonight. If you guys are down, we're gonna start with the content she put up today. So the grocery haul in Kuwait, and then the pate chinois video that she just just put out about an hour ago, something like that. Okay, then we're going to bounce back to yesterday and watch um, Muslim Canadian housewife in Kuwait at home routine. Blech. And then to end the night off, we have a very, very short little update from Lushy. The other day we watched the fridge restock video. Well, Lushy restocked the fridges again. <clears throat> the video is under a minute long and it's going to outrage you. So anyway, that's it plan for tonight. If you guys are down with that order of operations, I figure let's start with the new stuff from today. I figure most of you haven't seen it yet. You know, <laughs> uh, feral girl, thank you for the super chat. I the spike shack. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, so like I said, we're going to start with the freaking grocery haul. So hold on, let me get the tab. Who spent all this money on chicken strips and cheese? Hi, welcome back to another video. Hi guys, before you watch this video, I just want to let you know that I do guys, so I have a grocery haul for you. God damn it, she tricked me with that cameo. You know, I usually skip right past the cameos, right? Because she was in the kitchen. She filmed that one in real time. I didn't see it coming. Oh, I walked right into that one. Damn you, Chantal. Are you? I'm going to be cooking, like I said, and we've been eating out a lot, way too much. Up until like now, we've just been eating out. So other than the cooking you've seen and some breakfast and that here and there. So I'm going to show you what I got for this grocery haul, and I'll tell you the prices at the end. I did, we ordered from two different places online this time. So um, yeah, so let's get to, let's get to. All right. <laughs> so first we have some apricot juice, apricot nectar. I have a broccoli mix, broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots. We have some chicken strips. Now, because uh, Ramadan is coming, they have a lot of good sales. And they also, because uh, Kuwait National Day is coming, like it's a holiday weekend, holiday week coming up, actually. So they also have some good sales. Uh, we have, I want to try these. These are cheese-flavored chicken fillets, crunchy ones. So... Oh, okay, okay. 
we're we're explaining the reason that we bought sixteen thousand chicken strips is because Ramadan's coming. Oh, because they were on a good deal. So a binge eater buys sixteen bags of chicken nuggies because they're on a good deal. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I air fry those when I'm craving like fried chicken. I have some corn. I really want to make a cottage pie, so stay tuned. Um, two things of beef meatballs. These beef meatballs are really good quality, and they had them on sale. So I got two boxes, a whole chicken, a couple of beef stock cubes. I'm letting her try this sheet, but we already got her wet food. But we're letting her try a can to see if she You know what's really weird? Like, okay, spoiler alert. There's certain items coming up that there's like industrial quantities of for she says two people we think one person whatever she buys industrial quantities of certain things but then two bouillon cubes like why wouldn't you buy a pack of bouillon cubes who buys 10 pounds of potatoes but shins is out on the bouillon cube like i don't get it is it a budget thing maybe she likes it um we have some parmesan cheese we have some apricot jam. This with labna for breakfast on bread is so delicious. Some cooking cream. This is like processed cream cheese spread, kind of like craft. Um, so yeah, some cream cheese. This is good on like paratha or like chapati bread. Or it's good to add to like pasta sauces and stuff like that to make like a rosé. We have some good to make like a rosé. People don't make rosé with fucking processed cheese product in a tube. That's just disgusting. She's processing it. Yeah, it's just processed. That's that fucking cheese. Ugh. Okay. She did say that they're getting groceries from two places. Does anyone else notice that the groceries seem a little different? I mean, the chicken nuggets are still there. The things are still there, but the quantities and certain things there's there seems to be something different with this grocery haul than some of the grocery hauls from the past where yeah i believe he was spending more time at that place with her and stuff and now it clearly is just her alone most of the time living alone and she just doesn't want to admit it there's something different about this grocery haul hmm the lulu thank you for the super chat absolutely there's nothing at like breaking the fast at the end of the day than a good chicken nugget. Gouda slices, these are so good. These creamy Gouda slices for like grilled cheese or something. We have some two packs of halloumi. We have two packs of mozzarella cheese, shredded. And some frozen Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. Some more tomato paste, a huge staple here. I'll put that here. Goes on the stand here. <laughs> and we have some fat yogurt plain yogurt i use it like sour cream basically and i really want to make some fajitas so stay tuned for that as well all right i'm going to put a second load up here and i'll see you soon all right so oh that's fucking hilarious i didn't notice until just now that her shirt was open either she just leaves it yeah, you remember at the beginning when she performatively bent over and she pixelated her ass? Why didn't she pixelate this like uh, open button? Sharmuta behavior. Mm. I'm starting this round with Alsi Zero Sugar Cola. <laughs> it's a different brand. I'm gonna try. It's from also from Saudi Arabia. Put you up here. Oh my God! There's so many cans of it. She's like, oh, it's a different can. I'm gonna try. It's like trying something new for the first time at Costco. You know what I mean? You try one new thing. You buy one can if it's something that's, first of all, listen, I'm a purist, okay? Every other cola besides Coca-Cola sucks balls. You don't buy that many cans of some like second babka fucking Coke, okay? It's going to be nasty. Why would you do that? Because of your protest? Like you don't care. You're not actually boycotting anything. You, you pick and choose when you do. This is just... Oh, that God, that drink is going to suck. Have some water. Pepsi Zero is swill. Come and fight me. Stay hydrated, guys. <laughs> All right. I have some four sticks of unsalted butter. Four, uh, three things of labna. 
two jars of pasta sauce, four cranberry juices. I ordered four and it must've come in a pack of six. They just took the two out. Some tuna fish. Also put that here. I got some tikka masala paste. I want to make chicken tikka masala. <laughs> in this bag, I have a huge five kg thing of basmati rice. Oh no! What? Five kilos of rice! That's over 10 pounds of rice. Come on! You're ridiculous. Stop smiling like an asshole into the camera after showing us an almost 11 pound bag of rice for the love of Christ, man. You are one person. Devil's advocate on your weird game. You are two people. Wink. You're one, but you eat enough for four. Okay. Why the fuck would even two people need 11 pounds of rice? You know you have a problem with rice. You know you eat it by the hubcap full. Why would you bring in 11 pounds of something that you can't control yourself around? Makes zero sense. I've never seen two people go through, like, buy that much rice. And it's not even go through. It's not like they're going to have it for months. In the next grocery haul, she's going to buy more fucking rice. Chai with Sammy. Thank you for the super chat. Oh. I forgot to charge my mini fan. And this is a workout for me. I know, pathetic. I have some. No, it's beyond pathetic. You shouldn't be out of breath and sweating putting groceries away. You know you don't need an 11 pound bag of rice when you're sweaty and out of breath putting groceries away. Some minced meat, 95% from chilled New Zealand beef. This is like for Ramadan, for when people come over. Um, something to put out. This is mamul. Very, uh, it's like a date cookie with date inside. And this is covered in white chocolate. So really good. We have some chili flavored tortilla for some fajita. That was not purchased for Ramadan. I think we all know that, right? It's wasted words to make this commentary at this point, isn't it? Those aren't for Ramadan. Those are for you. She's going to eat them. They're cookies. They're full of dates. They're delicious. Loaded with calories. Oh my God. And then she even said they're dipped into white chocolate. Ba bam Oh my God. A dense little bomb of a cookie right there. Those are for her. Those are definitely not for any guests and not for Ramadan. <laughs> uh, we have some olive oil completely out. Some chicken tenders, plain tenders, some white bread, um, some macaroni, the long one. Did she just boo the white bread? Wait, wait, wait. I looked at the chat. I saw Bambi. Hi, Bambi. I saw Bambi and I was looking away and then I heard the boo. Did Was that boo about white bread? Some white bread. Mm. Uh oh, go fuck yourself for real. She's acting like the table was full of a good foods and then there's the loaf of white bread. Oh no, not the white bread loaf. Ooh, you just showed us 11 pounds of rice. You just showed before that a table full of cheese. Oh, no, not the white bread. Ooh. Um, some macaroni, the long one, and some short one. Caroline, thank you for the super jack girl. Like two kgs of onions, red, some nice looking romaine, and some green peppers. Yes, we have no more from that huge haul. Okay, I'm going to put this away. Yalla. Where did they all go, Chantal? In the garbage? Tell us they went in the garbage. Or he took them, hopefully, and brought them somewhere. Where the fuck? There's no way they went through all those peppers. Those those went in the garbage. Those were let to rot. <sighs> Making one trip. I like make one <laughs> making one trip. That's like, okay, you're coming in from the car with a bunch of bags. So you use your arms like fucking cranes and you bring in all the bags because you're going to do it in one trip, right? The table is right next to the fridge. In what world is that a trip? 
You know what, Chantal, you walk so very little and move so little. You should force yourself to purposely bring things one at a time for that two steps over. Oh my God, one trip. Oh. Fixing butter and olive oil when I'm cooking. I'm gonna use the meat soon, so I'll put it in the fridge. Chicken tenders. Labna. When she says Labna, it sounds like she's saying blah, blah. Every time she says it, I go blah, blah in my head. Have a Zoom mom. Thank you for the super chat. I hate that one too so much. I'm putting my onions in the fridge. I don't care what anyone says. Feel free to give me your feedback in the comments, but I tried leaving them out and they grow those like legs things and the antennas and then they don't last as long. So I'm putting the legs things and the antennas. Uh, uh, <laughs> the legs things and the antennas says foodie beauty to us about the onions. Uh, yeah, what, what a crazy thought that living in one of the hottest places in the world where the sun beats more intently than anywhere in the world and your onions would rot quick or, or not. It's not even rot. They would like sprout quick, you know? Oh my God, not the antennas. Oh, she's so dumb. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. Foodie beauty. At least. Okay, Miriam. Everyday Miriam. Maybe everyday Miriam is not a foodie like foodie beauty pretended to be. I'm in the fridge. I cleaned my fridge today, so it's not hard. I don't have to move things around. I love it. Ugh. And I can't bend all the way, so I just throw the food in the fridge. Ugh. <sighs> Yikes, bro. Yikes. Again, you don't definitely don't need 11 pounds of rice when you can't even bend down to put food in your fridge. Got some bread here. Olive oil can stay here on the stove. Pasta. These I'm going to freeze. I'm sorry for all the quick pauses, but it makes me so nervous that she just keeps her oil on the stove. Oh, she's going to turn on the oven one day and totally forget that that oil is there. And then that oil is just heating up like a little bomb in a bottle. That makes me so nervous. Take the oil off of the stove, please. Lisa Bear, thank you for the super chat. Good point. Okay, I thought of the eggs. I thought of the tons and tons of veggies. And I thought, okay, she did say that she did um, orders from two different places online. So benefit of the doubt, the shit tons of veggies and all those eggs maybe they all come from the other grocery store we'll have to wait till she gets the other like half of her order cupboard cupboard cupboards we have many litter bags now i also got a thing of paper towel since i've been in kuwait i have not this is the first time buying paper towel we usually use tissue paper or um, reusable towels, but whatevs. All right. Almirai mixed berry juice. Our favorite juice here. And this is just 5 kg of potatoes. It looks like russet, maybe. Yeah, they're dirty. 10 pounds of potatoes. 10 pounds of potatoes to go with 10 pounds of rice for two people. Two people, 10 pounds of potatoes. What do you even do with all that potato? I can't imagine, like I can't come up with 10 pounds worth of recipe to use up all those potatoes before they all go in the garbage. It's insane to me. 10 pounds of rice. 10 pounds of potatoes, two people, if you believe her stories, one person, if you believe in reality. And they smell like earth. Phew. 
potatoes. <laughs> gonna be eating a lot of those. Um, but that's, yeah, that's it. That's it for this haul. So I'll put the prices um, somewhere here. I'm gonna see how many meals I can get out of this. <laughs> you know, hopefully a lot. Potatoes, rice we have for a long time. Um, a huge bag like that lasts me maybe a couple months. So, but I don't know if I'm cooking more and not ordering, we'll see how long these things last. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's it for this haul. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know in the comments how much you typically spend on groceries per month or every week or whatever you want. Um, yeah, but that's not, that's not a month worth of groceries for her. We know this. First of all, we, she already said she orders from two places. So this is at best half of the groceries she's going to order. Okay, fine. But then she always orders meals out. So those meals, in my opinion, should also factor into this like cost of food because she doesn't even eat half of the meals like homemade. She eats a shit ton of her meals like takeout. I suppose that's when she can afford it. <laughs> Maybe that's a month to month thing these days, but no, I think it's crazy. Insane. Yeah, I, that's definitely not the spending for the month. That's a few days. I think we all understand that. Her next parade will be this fall in New York. Thanks, amazing. Damn, damn. Feral girl, thank you for the super chat. How dare she boo the bread of my childhood? It's just, it's a choice, eh? You know what I mean? All the crap that she constantly eats. The the she. I mean, right before showing us the bread, she showed us almost 11 pounds of rice and then booze the loaf of bread. It's ridiculous. Lord of the Fruit Flies, thank you for the super chat. Happy Gotcha Day to Nala, Queen of Ontario. Oh, that's so cute. It's true. Happy Gotcha Day, Pixie. Congratulations. It varies for us because we order out a lot. So I'm trying to nip that in the bud and try to just cook. So stay tuned for a cooking video. Like I said, I want to cook some things. So stay tuned for that. Um, probably the next video to come out. And of course, I'll see you in a live stream. <laughs> Bye, guys. Ah, all right. Well, that's the first one. See you on a live stream. Hey, yay, yay. Manic. Absolutely manic. Drugs? Yes. White bread? Boo. It's true. That's funny. That is really, really funny. She's just a wreck. I don't even know what to say about that, but I stand by the vibe that I got throughout that whole thing. There's something different about this grocery haul. It doesn't feel like grocery hauls from the past. I do not believe that he's around. I mean, we've all been saying it, but I think there's something off about that grocery haul. I can feel it that he's not there. I think we all do. Eh. She only bought enough chicken nuggies for herself. That's not uh, in, in her house anyway. Two person chicken nuggets. I don't believe it. It's all her food. Yeah. No candy bars, no snacks. Oh, Donna, that's interesting. Hmm. You're absolutely right. And she's broke. Well, today today is the YouTube payday. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> figures today is also the grocery haul. But... Yeah, I guess, wow. If you if this is the broke level of groceries you're doing on payday, this is going to be a very, very long month. Hmm. There was no pickles. There was, I don't know, the, the olives and stuff. But again, maybe that's going to be in the other half of the grocery haul. I can't remember like what comes with what. It could be. Benefit of the doubt until we see the other half. Alicia Brophy, thank you for the super chat. I think she got this from a food bank. She does not order white bread. Hmm. But she likes white bread. She does. And she bought her tuna cans. She likes tuna fish sandwiches on like, you know, I call it the dirty Italiano loaf. I love that Italiano loaf. It's like, ugh, it's so gross, but it's so good. She likes a white bread tuna fish sandwich. And there, I saw three cans of tuna. I think it's for the tuna sandwiches. I could be wrong. I don't know. Where are the pickles? Exactly, Lisa Bear. Again, benefit of the doubt until next time um, when she or next haul. I just assume it'll be the next video. The other half. She said she orders from two places. I'm going to benefit of the doubt her and say that it's coming with the other half of the grocery order. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Once we see that, we'll see, you know. Miss Movie Buff, thank you for the super chat. Legs things. Ugh, legs antennas and things. She's 
such a foodie beauty. <laughs> it's insane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Hold on, I'm a little behind down the chat. Polar Pinup, thank you for the super chat. Her gut is evolving into a Zeppelin. Oh, my God. She just starts floating. And she's, like, hobbling along. Whoop, her feet start, like, lifting off the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pickles and olives, nuts and seeds. Salad goes to buy them. Mm. He did go to buy them? Didn't it come with the last? Okay, I could be wrong. Roji, thank you for the super chat. This has nothing to do with Ramadan. Ramadan is all about traditional food. And I offered someone a chicken strip in Ramadan. They would spit in my face. <laughs> to be fair, she didn't say that the chicken strips were for um, uh, Ramadan. She said the, what, what are they called? The majul. I forget what they're called. The, the cookies with the dates, you know? I forget what they're called. Whatever. Uh, she said those were for the guests that were coming to the house during Ramadan. I'm, I'm going to call bullshit on that. I don't think so. Those are for her now. Like she saw those and went, oh, I'm going to eat those now. Have a stew, mom. Thank you for the super chat. Definitely on track to be the biggest girl by July. <sighs> Maybe she thinks if she gets massive, he can't leave her. She'll be stuck in Kuwait. He can't leave her. She's literally too big to send home. I don't know. Maybe that's what she's going for. Who knows? Mamul, that's it. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Siggy Rios, thank you for the super chat. Where's your diabetic emergency? <laughs> Non-existent, thank God. Damn. Oh, my God. I've never had... Oy, oy, oy. Yes, yes. The, the imaginary guest that will not be coming to the house. Deidre, thank you for the super chat. This was a struggle grocery order. White bread instead of pita and no shit ton of cheese. She's broke, broke. Well... I don't think the white bread above pita means anything. Pitas are hella cheap. Hella fucking cheap, okay? The white bread is a comfort food for her, for her fucking tuna sandwiches. That, to me, is is kind of more evidence that he's not around because, like you guys noticed, she never really buys white bread while she's been in Kuwait. Now, suddenly, it's loaves of white bread. He's not there. Zinka Cat, thank you for the super chat. My house uses 25 pounds of, of jasmine rice per year. That's worth three adults and two dogs. Damn. Damn. Put that into perspective. Chantal will be out of rice in a week. And that's for one person. 11 pounds. Holy shit. That's insane. She's his financial security. That's what important to salad. Doe, I think you're right. Addicted to cold brew. Thank you for the super chat. Gunther ate the Abaya button. <laughs> she just, she's so lazy too. Like, I, I just, I didn't even notice it was open. Like, okay, edit something there. Do something, bare minimum. No, doesn't care. Yeah, DG, I agree. That rice was insane. Lisa Bear, thank you again for the super chat. Do you think she's trying to get on my 600 pound life? Um, I don't think so, but she's still getting there. You know what I mean? Yikes. Luna, thank you for the super chat, girl. All right, y'all, what do you say we move on? The other piece of crap, I mean, piece of content she put out today is Pate Chinois Canadian Shepherd's Pie Mukbang and Recipe. Hold on, let me get the tab. Hello guys, so this is my way of making pâté chinois, a classic Canadian comfort food. I'm going to start with boiling potatoes with some salt, and then I'm going to add butter and olive oil and sauté some red onion. Okay, y'all want to fight tonight over pie? <laughs> she calls pâté chinois a classic Canadian comfort food. Okay, pâté chinois is what we call it in Quebec, okay? Okay. I have heard the debate over cottage pie or shepherd's pie. Um, what do you call it? Cottage pie, right? It's made with beef and shepherd's pie is made with lamb. I don't know shit about that because here we just call it pâté chinois, okay? And yes, a lot of people eat pâté chinois here. Not so much these days. I mean, it's still a thing here. But like historically in Quebec, um. Quebec was a pretty poor place and the Catholic government had a, a Catholic government, Catholic church had a shit ton of influence over the people, over just society in general here. Right. So no birth control, 
no Schmerz control. Uh, uh, historically in Quebec, it was very, very, very large families with not a lot of money. So they would make foods that would fill you up all day when you would eat them, you know, satiate you, fill you up, and were very cheap to make a large quantity. Thus, things like pâté chinois became extremely popular in Quebec for that reason. And it's just, it's tradition at this point, because it's like the old school things are still very much tradition. In Quebec, they love to stick to the tradition, right? So yeah, pâté chinois, still very much a thing here. To call pâté chinois a Canadian delicacy, I don't know about that. Because if you just translate that to English, it's a cottage pie, and a cottage pie or a shepherd's pie is fucking British. So it's sort of a British and English comfort food. I wouldn't say it's a Canadian comfort food, but maybe that's just me picking at nothing. I don't know. Uh, basement baby, thank you for the super chat. Good luck, basement baby. It's just one diced red onion, and I'm going to let them cook down very, very well. And then in another pan, I have some olive oil and butter as well and some frozen corn. I'm making homemade cream corn. I've never done this before. Now I'm going to add to the onions about 500 grams of... Another thing. And another thing. I've never had cream corn on a pâté chinois. Maybe that's just me. You guys tell me if you have. Maybe that's like a thing outside of here. But I've I've never had that. It's just corn like niblets in the in between the meat and then the potatoes. You know what I mean? Cream corn? She just wants to put cream on some shit ground beef mince. I'm going to season it with seven spice, Worcester sauce, black pepper, some onion, and some garlic powder as well. And I'm also going to add some flour, maybe a tablespoon or so. Uh, this will thicken up and make like a kind of gravy. And I'm going to add a one beef stock cube to that and some water, maybe three quarters of a cup or so. And uh, just stir that around really well and let that cook down. The liquid will cook down. I'm going to add some heavy cream to the corn and some salt and pepper, as well as a Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. This is an abomination. Can we just go back to this meat mix for a minute? The meat's not even browned up and she's adding water to it. So basically you're not like browning up your meat. You're boiling your meat in fucking bouillon and water now. Foodie beauty. We'll thicken up and make like a kind of gravy. And I'm going to add a one beef stock cube to that and some water, maybe three quarters of a cup or so. And uh, just stir that around really well and let that cook down. The liquid will cook down. I'm going to add some heavy cream to the corn and some salt and pepper. That's absolutely unnecessary. My God, man. You, you're making fucking pate chinois. That's a calorie dense, like bomb to the stomach. She, Fatty had to find a way to put heavy cream in it. Cream on cream corn. Th there's no cream corn in a pate chinois. It's just the kernels, just the, the niblets, whatever. You, you, there's no cream all over it in that layer. Pepper, as well as a couple tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. It will just help everything um, thicken up. There's a bit. no Parmesan cheese in the corn layer of a fucking pate chinois. This is awful. Swamp Boogie Sue, thank you for the super chat. And I'll let that uh, cook down a bit until that thickens up a little bit as well. All right, and there you have it. The corn is finished. Doesn't that look delicious and no. creamy? Yum. The meat mixture is pretty much done. I'm just going to add a splash of ketchup and a little bit of tomato paste. And here it is. It's thickened up quite nicely. I'm actually really impressed. And here are the mashed potatoes, fluffy with a splash of cream, butter, and a little bit of salt. Now we layer a casserole with the meat mixture first. Then we layer on the cream corn. And then last we have the potatoes on top. Now I'm adding some shredded mozzarella cheese, the traditional recipe. Of course. Of course you did. Of course, there's mozzarella on the top because why not add more calories with adding zero taste of all of the cheeses you could have added, man. Don't make me start about the mozzarella. Just just throw those calories in the garbage. Sydney, thank you for the super chat. 10 pounds of potatoes for her fat ass. That's what. Recipe doesn't call for cheese, but we're going to be pate chinois trendsetters here. So, and it's out of the oven. 
Holy shit, I just got the concept of what that thing's being cooked in. I did not notice it until she just took this shot of it coming out of the oven and I saw the handles. She cooked the pâté chinois in that massive casserole thing that she had made the chicken pot pie in. That's the same dish. It's the same handles. It's the same size. Oh my God. Do you know how big that thing is? My mom used to make pâté chinois when I was a kid. I would eat pâté chinois maybe like four times a year. My mom would make it, right? We were four people, my family. She would make it in, you know, like the little Pyrex dish that's like a square. So you cut it in four. Everybody got the square. The thing is done. The square of the Pyrex was probably half of the size of that. And we were four people eating it. I mean, like I'm a fatty. You know what I mean? <laughs> like not everyone in my family is a fatty, but they were eaters. Four people, half of that size. So she knows she's going to binge. This is the new pie. This is the pie of the week, if you will. Last week was the chicken pot pies. This week we're on to pate sheen was. She's going to eat the whole damn thing herself. She knows that. She sets herself up for these nasty binges and shit, preparing that big of a chicken, a chicken pot pie, a pate chinois. Nice and bubbly. The cheese is melted. This looks delicious. So let's plate this up. Let's go. Perfect example. Look at the size of the piece she's taken out. The piece she's taken out is her serving. There are six servings in that pan. Six fucking servings. Maybe you could make eight servings out of that even, you know? She's one person going to eat that pie. Yes, pie of the week. <laughs> I said it. I stand by it. Hello, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to another video. Um, let me just fix my tablecloth, plastic cloth here. <laughs> so I'm so excited to eat this with you guys. Julia is too. She's up here. This is a staple in French Canadian cuisine. It's called pâté chinois, which translates to Chinese pie. So you know how you have, it's kind of like the French Canadian take on shepherd's pie. Chinese pie. That, that's like, the, if you took it to Google, what would Google give you of a translation? The translation of pâté chinois is shepherd's pie. It's not one of those things that translates word for word, you fucking idiot. Bilingual queen, though, right? Mm. Cottage pie. I usually just call it shepherd's pie, but yeah, the French is pâté chinois. All right, so I have a diet cola. The brand is Alsi. Saudi Arabia. So it's a Saudi. Yes, guys. Okay, not only did she serve herself that food with bread, but do you notice something that I notice? Look at the... Okay, towards... Well, how can I explain it? The, the side of the plate furthest from her, closer to us, right? Look at the piece of bread and then look at the mashed potato next to that piece of bread. I'm sorry, that mashed potato doesn't look like the top of the pot. Like she flopped over a serving. I think she served herself a bed of mashed potatoes. It looks too perfectly placed there. So she had leftover mashed potatoes. She served herself a big scoop on the bottom of the plate. And then put the scoop of uh, pâté chinois on top. And that's what she's eating right now. Look at how perfect that bottom potato is. That didn't just flop over. Brand. And I have some ketchup. I put ketchup on mine. In my opinion, that's the true Canadian way. If you don't, that's fine. But I do. <laughs> so, bismillah. Why is it the true Canadian way? Because that's what you did in the corn cornhole. God damn it, Chantal, let everybody ruins all their food by slathering the top with ketchup. And I have some Brussels sprouts in the air fryer with a bit of butter, salt, and pepper, and some buttered bread. You have to have white bread with butter with these. Let's try these Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. Mm. They're sweet. And they're so good. I've been seriously craving this for so long. Mix it all around. There you go. She's like manically eating her fucking pie. I've been seriously craving this for so long. So I made myself a serving dish full and I'm going to binge on this. And it is the pie of the week. And she'll probably make another one. Uh, damn. Hey. 
Oh my God. Where's your scat man, Pondu? Thank you for the super chat. Do you think she used 10 pounds of potato in the pie? Mm, not 10, but she, she probably used a good third of that bag of potatoes for the pie, for her side potatoes. It's cheesy. <laughs> Put that mozzarella on there. Now, I just added the cheese, but the traditional recipe, apparently there's like an author who wrote a story about potation one, how it's like mysterious. Oh, I know, same shirt, different video. I'm not changing, I'm, doing, I'm not putting two outfits on for the same day. I won't do, I won't do, unless I don't want you to think it's the same day. <laughs> anyway, um, hot. Potation one or shepherd's pie is like scalding hot for like an hour after it comes out. Mm, not bad. So she burns her mouth on it. Jesus Christ. A second before taking the bite. Oh, it's so hot. Uh, burn your mouth on it. Have a sue, mom. Thank you for the super chat. That really takes me back. To growing up. Because I have a lot of newcomers. So I grew up in, I'm Canadian, born and raised. And I was born in a small town called Cornwall, which is close to Ottawa and Quebec. This is for the new audience. She's like, I was born in a small town called Cornhole. You were smart. You were, you were smart. You were funkified in a tiny crack pit called Cornholio. Okay. You are a Cornholio. And anyone that comes out of Cornholio is a Cornholio. That's you. Your dinner looks like a diaper exploded onto a plate and you put some ketchup on it. How come? Like, Pate Chinois, it's not a beautiful thing. But how come? I've never seen such a cluster fuck on a plate. Of a pate chinois in my life. Lord of the Fruit Flies, thank you for the super chat. It's mostly bilingual. French and English. Cornwall? What the fuck's bilingual in Cornwall? It's weird to find a French person or like a French speaking person in Cornwall. Based on my experience, everything there happens in English. So because of Quebec, which is um, a French province, they have a lot of French food influence. That's uh, half of, yes, because Quebec is French. There's a lot of French food influence because Quebec was the original colony in Canada. Canada starts like not the indigenous Canada, obviously, but like the uh, Europeans coming and coming to Canada, let's say it starts in Quebec. So yes, some of the oldest tradition and things like that is from Quebec because it's the oldest fucking place. Nevermore. Thank you for the super chat. And, um, there are theories about where the name Pate Chinois comes from. Some think it's like the rail when they were building the Canadian railway, um, there were migrant Chinese workers and um, they were mostly fed potatoes, like meat and corn. But then it's also like, apparently they, but some also say that they ate soybeans and rice. So who knows? There's like a bunch of, a few theories, but I was introduced to Pate Chinois. Um, from growing up. Okay, so the story that I had heard about why pâté chinois is called pâté chinois is that there was a place in Maine ages ago that had, it was called like something Sheen, China, and it was a town in Maine. And a lot of the French Canadians from here would go and work down there seasonally and then come back here. And it was a dish that they brought back here from Maine, from that town in Maine. I've never heard anything about, I swear to God, never heard it being attributed to the railroad or anything besides a town in Maine that Quebecois brought it here from. My grandmother made it. No, my mom made it. And the funny thing is, she made it exactly like this, but she used canned cream corn. I 
a can of cream corn, which I love, and a can of niblets. And growing up, I was made fun of a lot in school. Like I was bullied for my weight, also for being on welfare. What? What? What is she talking about? Since since when was she bullied for being on welfare? Seven years in and I'm hearing a new story today. Am I insane? I must be insane. How in the fuck is a new story just going to pop up like that after seven years? The story we've heard over and over is what a hardworking uh, person her mother was. She tries to paint her mother. Well, well, back in the day, she was dropped off by her grandmother's and left to be raised by a TV and a bag of chips. Then the story shifted over to her mom was just so hardworking, such a hardworking single mom. And now she's saying she was raised on welfare. Okay. Somebody worked it out once that Chantal would have been only about five years old when her mother met her stepfather stepfather that's her sister's father who her mother is still married to to this day five years old so when exactly were you raised on welfare well when did you grow up on welfare and when were you made fun of for growing up on welfare that's just complete fabrication i was called welfare girl in elementary school sometimes or like i get made fun of like my mom did the best she could but she was like a single mom right and we didn't have a lot of money. She was going through college. And um, what? She was very young also. Like they didn't let her finish high school because she was pregnant. So she had to like finish it later. I don't remember how she finished it, but anyway, she ended up going to college. But um, we didn't have a lot of money. So this was shepherd's pie or pâté chinois was considered like a poor man's meal. You know, Ground beef being the cheaper, not now, maybe, but back then, the cheaper type of beef. Oh my gosh, too much cheese, maybe. And, um, oh. I'm fucking choking on the cheese. Yeah, I don't see a ring either. So, ring was off, then ring was back on two days ago, and now ring is off again. Interesting. Moonlight, thank you for the super chat. Hmm, never mind. So I never liked it growing up because I always thought like, ugh, I don't want this poor man's meal. Now I love it. <laughs> Newsflash, you are now the poor man trying to get in as much food as possible for as cheap as possible. Of course you love a pate chinois now. Of course you do. It's it's comforting. It reminds you of child and stuff. You thought you were above it as a child. It's funny. That's how I've told you guys before. That's how I felt about chicken legs when I was a kid. To me, that was the poverty meal. I, I don't like chicken legs because of that. You think of hard times to me if you think of chicken legs, you know? Oh, my God. To her, okay, that was pate chinois. Yeah. She, th there's no welfare girl. Nobody ever called her welfare girl. There was never like that, uh, her on welfare and stuff. We've never heard this story. This is complete fabrication. A story for her new audience. A little, oh, start out pitying me. Uh, Leone Mac, thank you for the super chat. She can't button up properly. <laughs> I love it. I didn't also really like the taste growing up either. Now I love it. Um, but yeah, I remember like always wanting, like when Tommy Hilfiger shirts were popular. What? She just stopped talking after that. I'm. You were talking about pate chinois, and then you suddenly just mentioned that you wanted a Tommy Hilfiger shirt when they were popular. But like, I'm waiting to hear what she says next because that seemed to come out of nowhere, and I'm waiting to see the connection. Then she she just stops stops talking. We went to a, a flea market. It was a flea market in St. Polycarp. Anyone from around the area will know. <laughs> and they had knockoff Tommy Hilfiger, but they were like gaudy and weird.
<laughs> and my mom was like, they'll never know. They'll never know. They knew. <laughs> I got made fun of so bad. What? Okay. 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 Let's stop. Let's just cut the shit right here. And let's be honest. You were growing up in Cornwall. Um, you had a fake Tommy Hill figure. Everybody had a fucking fake Tommy Hill figure and fake Nikes and fake whatever the fuck else. It's Cornwall, Ontario. There was probably two kids in the whole damn class who didn't have fakies. What are you talking about? What it is again, so that she's like the victim instead of being in the majority? Cornwall. Cornwall. Come on. It was like a shiny material, like a turquoise, and it said Tommy, but I think there was like a spelling error. Yeah, they really look the nasty. Feral girl, thank you for the super chat. So I got made fun of by like a group of guys the whole day. Oh, she went to Catholic school. Catholic school, aka uniform, aka this story never happened. Cool, cool, got it. Figures. Mm. This wasn't the Tommy Hilfiger was in high school, like when I first started going to high school, like grade eight. Um, Maybe it was grade eight or grade nine. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, DG, you're right. My bad. That's the gem. Thank you for the super chat, girl. Now? Ah, hold on. Mimi K. FFG, she told this story at BB's house, but was, oh, wait, uh, damn it. Whoa, my chat is completely frozen. Okay, I think it said uh, she told this story at BB's house, but it was the first day of high school or something. Okay, so maybe you don't need a uniform on the first day. We'll benefit of the doubt here. But I still stand by what I said. It was still Cornwall, Ontario, and every motherfucker in that class was wearing a fake shirt. I look back and I'm proud of that poor man's meal or welfare meal. Because the truth is I was rich in a lot of ways I didn't realize. I had a lot of love in my life for my family. My mom, it was like me and her against the world, man. Huh. Is that why you hate your sister so much? If it was always you and your ma against the world and then she had that other kid, maybe that's why you were like the good son to your sister because you were so fucking jealous when something else came along and took your mom's attention because it was you and your ma against the world. Even though you did tell us that your mom dumped you at your clinically depressed grandmother's house to be raised by a TV and a bag of chips, now it's you and your ma against the world. Okay. Christine, thank you for the super chat. And I turned out, I turned out to like this meal very much. You like every meal very much. Oh, God, yeah. Okay, so her sister is born and little shit 11-year-old Chantal comes stampeding into her mom's room and she's, like, cuddling her new baby and goes, what about me? <laughs> baby starts screaming and crying. Her mom throws her out of the room. Yeah, rivalry is born. So if you ever feel bad, Because you think what you're eating is a poor man's meal? Don't. Food is food. You know, mashallah. Every food is amazing. 
You really felt the need to tell us? Girl, we know that you think that every food is amazing. Don't feel mad if you're eating a poor man's meal. The world has changed, bitch. Food used to be hella cheap when we were kids. It's not the same anymore. Everything is so goddamn expensive. If you're lucky enough to have what used to be called a poor man's meal, you are doing better than a lot of people are. You no longer feel like a poor man. You feel pretty fucking lucky. You, though, who has done fuck all to earn any money in the past decade, doesn't even understand the value of a dollar, wouldn't get it. Actually, I learned this recently, but it makes sense now. I'm surprised I didn't realize it earlier, but in Islam, it's so hard to, like, diss food. One, because so many people are starving. Two, um, it, food's a blessing. Depends what kind, you know, as long as you don't let it harm you, but, which I know I have. This is so good. Damn, Amy, thank you for the super chat girl. Another poor man's meal, they call them this. I like his beans and wieners with toast, crap dinner and wieners, macaroni and cheese. Trash, you are trash. You have the nerve to call people uncultured swine. Beans and wieners. You know why she likes beans and wieners, right? Because it's the only type of bean or wiener that she's able to reach or slash touch, is able to touch. So if she doesn't eat beans and wieners, she's certainly not flicking hers or touching one. You know what I mean? Beans and wieners. Go fuck yourself. Macaroni and bees. <laughs> There's a follower with that, <laughs> with that handle. Hey, of all the foods she could have said, all the foods in the world she could have said there, beans and wieners was the first thing that came to her mind. You know why? She's got beans and wieners. Yeah, beans, it's lost all meaning now. Beans and wieners on the mind. So I did a menu today. I had a very productive day. That is some fat fuck behavior. <laughs> you roll out of bed in the afternoon. Uh, you order your groceries because it's payday and you can afford to. And then what do you do? You go and lay out like a walrus and make yourself a menu. <laughs> That's a very productive day. Yeah. Mm. I was just so sick of like ordering out. I'm like, I need to eat. You're right. Sweaty blue cheese hijab surprise. Thank you for the super chat. She did. She never made this in the luxury villa ever. Here's why I think she didn't. The meat probably costs more. Did you see she only bought like a pound of ground beef? A pound of ground beef. You can like make this out of a pound of ground beef. It spreads, you know? What you can't make is a meatloaf. That meat poop thing. That's what she used to make all the time at the luxury villa. She wants a meat poop, but she can't get her hands on like eight pounds of mincemeat. Nasty. A home cooked meal. And I love comfort food. And she's in her pie era. So yeah, every time... Oh, yeah, Danny DeVito. Exactly what she did to the, like, uh, pate chinois, like, spread ketchup over the whole top. That's what I used to do when I was a kid, till I was about 10 years old, you know? But to be fair, I would have put ketchup on a steak when I was a kid, too. Kids are dumb. You know, I'd be off to school. I would ask my mom, what are we having for dinner tonight after school? We're having shepherd's pie. You would ask that when in the morning? Wait, 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 wait. What are we having tonight after school? Doesn't that sort of imply that you're asking your mother in the morning what you're going to have for dinner? <laughs> Fat. Lisa Bear, thank you for the super chat. Um, I feel so bad at her going like, oh, what? 
I'm just picturing myself like on the way to school, turning to my mom and being like, mom, what are we having tonight for dinner when I get home from school? She would have turned to me like I was from Mars and been like, the fuck? I don't fucking know, you know? Spacemen, how dare you? Get a blocked. That's super low. Not as per cam. Hell yeah. <laughs> Gypsy Rock, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> so is that aspartame? <laughs> Sounds like aspartame. That's Cecil fame. Shmi is Chantal's nickname for her, or Sneeve. I don't know why I always call her Shmi. Shmi, that's what Chantal calls her, and she calls Chantal cutie. <clears throat> oh, well. Whatever. Everything is going to freaking kill us someday. I don't know. Like, I've seen four different videos back to back on whether eggs are good for you or not. So confusing. Chantal, you're a 450 pound death fat with the health problems from head to toe. The last thing you need to be worried about right now is the health benefits of eggs. My God, if eggs was your biggest problem. Yum, I love Brussels sprouts. They're one of my favorite vegetables, that and broccoli. I like raw broccoli too, but it just, it's all the chewing, my jaw gets tired after. You're just as lazy as the rest of her. <laughs> I guess that's it. I just wanted to uh, just share this dinner with you, but it brings me back. Okay, that's extremely fucking depressing. Get out of here. My throwback pate chinois. What a weirdo. She's shaped like an egg. Yeah, she calls me an egg on legs. I, I, I mean, I get it, but I also think that's some massive projection. If I'm an egg on legs, She's like, you know those big-ass dinosaur eggs in Jurassic Park? She's one of those on legs then. Damn. Fucking lunatic. Okay, now we have seen the two pieces of crap, I mean pieces of content that she has put out today. We're going to go back in time to yesterday. Muslim Canadian housewife in Kuwait at home routine. I've been waiting for this one. Let me get the dab. Deep in the shadows, I know it's hard to pull one foot in front of the other. Uh -huh. Hey there, Beezers. Want a personalized video from me to you that you can keep from to everybody? How about Boy, next? On the Stop sneaking bag. up on me with the fucking cameo shit, and then the oh, the cat, then the rat, Fink. My bad, y'all. She suckered me into watching that. <laughs> Oh, the battle of the nasties. Moist old hijab cheese, a.k.a. Alexandra K., a.k.a. my fucking bully. Thank you for the super chat. There can only be one hijab cheese. 9 p.m. parking lot. Oh, yes. Can I be Can I be the ref? I will meet you bitches at the Orange Julep, 9 p.m. looks over at the camera try not to break the fourth wall you fucking idiot just do the task okay you don't need to eye fuck yourself in the first minute of the video <laughs> Why are those clothes dry? Look at them. Those are dry clothes. 
I have so much to say. Oh my God. Why are you putting dry clothes into the dryer? How are you taking dry clothes out of a washing machine? That's number one. The fuck? Did you just run water on them? And have they been sitting in there to just get moldy and stinky for days? Did you wash them at all? Are you so cracked at this point that you forgot that you didn't wash them? Are those all your clothes? I don't see any of salads fucking like fake Kappa tops and stuff like that. The super dries. Where's your fake husband's clothes? And why is everything dry going into a dryer? I don't get this. You fucking idiot. You're supposed to fluff things before you put them into a dryer. Look at this asshole. Goes out of her way to ball up whatever the hell she just picked up off the floor. Balls it up and chucks it into the dryer. When you're supposed to do the exact opposite. You fluff things up. You you like separate things and unball them to throw them in a dryer, you moron. How can she be 40? <laughs> idiot Hello guys, Assalamu alaikum. welcome back to another video. So some of you have really liked the day in the life of a Kuwait housewife videos. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> what videos? What are you talking about? There's been like one and it sucked balls and this one's gonna suck too. Who, nobody wanted this, nobody asked for this. This is performative for a new audience. God damn it. Why does that package say slim? You see that? That orange box? Slim what? Why does that logo look familiar? <laughs> Has she showed us this before? Or is this something we don't know about? What is this? She looks stoned again. So stoned. It's like it's like heat stroke in her own damn house. What a mess. We haven't? We never saw them. Slim T. Okay, that's why the logo looks familiar. I've seen that. That's the Yerba Mate box? I don't think so. The one on top, maybe. The under is that the Yerba Mate box? Okay, maybe that's why it looks familiar. It could be. Oh, I don't have any kids to take care of, but that's okay. I still have a household to maintain, and I have a husband, and I have pets, and I have myself to look after as well. So, um, uh, so you don't maintain a house. Your husband isn't there. You can't take care of yourself, and your pets probably are already in kind of dire shape. Got it. Uh huh. <laughs> Got it. That about neck shot all with you. So again, this all has to do with what was kind of outed on Twitter today about her being part of some group and they do like sub for sub type of thing because um, it's it's people from there, it seems, you know what I mean? So she's got the, the subtitles in Arabic to appeal to the new audience. She's playing all housewifey and all this bullshit is for this new audience. I don't know. Does this seem like a real fucking cop out of a way to get to 100,000 subs? Like you're so fucking close and this is what you do when you're like a thousand subs away. What a fucking loser move in my mind. Deep fried dreams. Thank you for the super chat. It certainly is. Yeah, I'm just going to show you a few things I do around here. And I guess this video will be in particular kind of um, a breakfast routine. Now breakfast, it is noon. It's like 12 p.m. I don't eat very early in the day. I don't like to, I'm just not hungry. So I'm not going to shut your fat face. <laughs> You're just not hungry. You're hungry within 20 minutes of getting up. You've often eaten your first meal on film with CPAP marks still fresh on your face. You only roll out of bed at noon. That's why you only eat your first meal at noon. Stop it. Silent witness. Thank you for the super sticker. Force it. But my first meal of the day will be 
you know, um, breakfast, well, breakfast, lunch. And uh, as you saw from my blood sugar reading, um, I basically find that when I fast in the morning, by the time I take my fasted blood sugar reading, it's always lower because of that. So, but it's actually pretty low today. Usually it's like when I fast in the morning, it's not fasting when you're asleep. That's just sleeping. You sleep through the morning. You wake up at noon. That's not fasting the morning away. Like 10, 10.5. All right, so let's make brunch. But first, I'm going to start with this Unicity Slim Balance. It is a soluble fiber oh. drink, all natural, organic. Okay, that was it. Slim Balance. And yeah, I guess we are back to hawking the bullshit the drink, eh? You just said it in the last live stream two days ago. Uh, I guess she wasn't uh, hawking the MLM anymore. Well, here she is doing us a pitch. Miss Movie Buff, thank you for the super chat. And it has the vitamins I've been getting at the clinic the B vitamins, B12, and a lot of other minerals and vitamins as well. So I usually uh, take this uh, before eating. All right, I'm going to down this. should drink it within 10, 15 minutes. And then wait 15 minutes before you eat. So I'll be back. All right, guys. See you. I mean, mud slicker, you're not wrong. Technically sleeping is a fasting window. It's true. But that just seems like the fattest type of like, <laughs> the fattest fasting I've ever heard of in my life. Polar pinup, thank you for the super chat. Technically everything she wears should be fitting loosely, but <clears throat> that's not happening. He hates that drink. I, I love how much she hates that fucking drink. She can barely swallow it. It's so funny. Kirby's down anything else that goes in her gullet. But this drink, bleh, and she's like forcing it down. It's so good. So I have some food. I'm going to heat that up. It's like fava beans, tomato, olive oil spices like cumin i'm gonna put just a few potato french fries in the air. what whoa, 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 whoa. look at the look at the fucking paw full of frozen fries this is what you just stick your hand you open the freezer you stick your fat paw into the bag of frozen fries and come out with some i'm just, I'm just gonna air fry a few of these <laughs> ew i'm gonna put just a few potato french fries in the air fryer a little bit of Himalayan salt. All right. This is ready. Okay, so I have some Istanbuli cheese. You know how I love this. Some black olives. It just sticks your fucking hands into everything. It makes me so sick. Oh my God. Like, okay. These are all foods that I love. I love this plate that she's making. Mm, I would fuck that up for dinner so hard. I love fool. I make some really damn good fool. Mm, delicious. I love that shit. Okay. Breakfast. The thought of that. And I know a lot of people in the Middle East doing stuff, but you know what? A lot of people in the Middle East after that, go out and go to work a long day of work. It's not the same. She's just staying home all day. You're starting your day with a plate full of beans that so fucking unnecessary, Chantal. And then you go on to your day of eating potatoes and hubcaps of rice. It's ridiculous. Basement baby, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> It will make doing the dishes easier when you soak them first. I'm sure you guys know that. <laughs> Don't make me ask the obvious. <clears throat> Where's your husband? <laughs> 
Where is he? Where is your husband? Why are you making breakfast for one? Your husband just had surgery, allegedly, and is now back home, allegedly. Why aren't you making him a good bean breakfast to, like, mm, recover from a surgery? Yeah. If anybody should be eating food first thing in the morning, bitch, it's not you. Oh. But, yeah. Where's your fake husband? <laughs> All alone. Eating alone. Everything alone. Bit of a Zatar. So, Zatar has, like, different... It's not just time. There's like different seeds, like herbs in there. There's sesame seeds, oregano. Can you read wifey number three? Thank you for the super chat. It's, it's just, you know, wifey things. Mm -hmm. Okay. How's wifey things? How's wifey things to an invisible husband? Time. I think marjoram. Well, I have to charge my microphones. I don't know why it's not working. It says it's still got some charge, but. <laughs> So the sound quality might not be the best, but there we go. Uh, anybody else find it much better without the fucking microphone? It's like relief to your ears, eh? These are awesome microphones. Um, we got these in Thailand. I would highly recommend Boya. Have That's a Sumam. Thank you again for the super chat. So this is my breakfast, some bread, pita bread, some uh, air fried potatoes, french fries, some food some cheese, uh, in Arabic it's called juven, and some zaytun, olives. Gosh, she's so proud of herself, she learned two words. Okay, so a serving of beans, a serving of fries, olives, cheese, two pitas for one person. She didn't make breakfast for her and her husband, so there's two pitas on that plate. No, 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 no. She needs two pitas and beans and fries first thing in the morning because you need to carb load for a big day of laying out like a walrus on a couch searching your own name online So now I'm just going to do some post brunch dishes. I Okay, this is such, oh, this pisses me off so bad. I saw everybody complaining about this too on Twitter, and I'm with you. I hate the wasting of the water. The way she washes dishes just pisses me off so bad. Who taught you how to wash dishes? Ma'am, it's 2024. There are cities on earth already run out of water. Who the fuck taught you how to wash dishes like this? She washes dishes like a pig. She, you know, just like she does everything else. But Jesus Christ, all the water's for me. Fuck the rest of the world. I have been trying to keep up with them as I go. Now, this little side area of the sink always gets dirty with like sand dust. She's just wiping down casually the side of the sink while the water is just running and running and running at full blast because I keep the window cracked a bit, so I always have to wash the, the little bits of sand off. Fun fact about living in the Middle East, in Kuwait, in a desert country. Like, did you see how much water just ran for her to wash one fork? Oh. Who drives things like that? Who drive? Where do you think the water is going to go? For real, for real. Who taught her how to do dishes? <laughs> yeah, wasting water in a desert. You're right, DG. Fucking hell. It runs, it runs for 10 minutes. Look, look at the way she's putting all the dishes. Like, where does she think the water is going to go? Does she understand how gravity works? I don't think she does. Oh. 
Oh, sorry. Nessa Jen, thank you for the super chat. What happens when she gets to 100K? Well, she wants the fucking plaque from YouTube. But apparently, if you want the plaque, it's not automatic when you get to 100K. You have to like kind of apply to get that plaque. And then what they do is they review your channel. So I don't know. Make with that what you will. Will she end up getting a plaque? I don't know. All right, dishes are all done, and now I'm just going to scrub my hands with some foaming cranberry hand soap, which is uh, also for my husband's business. And last but not least, I just have to put my ring back on. Now I'm going to wash the floor. I take this like floor squeegee thing and I get any little bits um, and I just kind of direct them into the drain on the floor. And I don't like using the broom because I don't want it to get like, in case there's like a little bit of grease on the floor or something like that. So I just use the squeegee and put all the little bits of food into the drain. Now I did just wash my floor yesterday. I've been trying to keep up with that every day as well after a day of cooking. In the oh, hold on. Are you supposed to put solids down in those drains? I've never heard of that. I, I This could be my ignorance. Maybe it's like, oh yeah, it's fine to just put solids down in those drains. But from what I know about like places where the kitchens and bathrooms, like grease is like that, right? It's just water. You don't put chunks down those drains. You protect those drains. Those drains have little covers on them specifically so that things like chunks wouldn't be getting down in there. The only time I've ever seen anybody pushing water down those drains was like the finishing touch of washing the floor. You sweep the shit out. Then the beauty, oh, I wish I had a house with drains, a drain in my bathroom and a drain in my kitchen. I would kill for that shit. You can just fucking go nuts, fucking water and cleaner and shit all over the place. And then you just push the water to the drain. It's fantastic, but definitely not chunks. I've never heard of that before. I've never seen that before. That's nuts. Why are her floors greasy? That's a good question, Bambi, because she's a fucking pig. She's a pig who can't cook. She does everything too high. She was uh, reheating the uh, full at like almost high heat. She learned how to cook from Koki, and that's not a good thing, you know? So anytime she's frying something, it's probably fucking oil splashing everywhere and a mess. She's a mess. Delulu, thank you for the super chat. Her commitment to delusion is award worthy. You know, it really is. She sweats grease. Could be right also. Uh, here's another one. I've never seen somebody have to put the bucket of their mop up on a chair. Jesus fucking Christ. You know you don't need 11 pounds of rice and potatoes when you need to put your bucket up on the chair because you can't even bend down enough to like wring out your mop. The fuck? In the kitchen. Now this is some floor deodorizer for my husband's business. It just makes your floor smell really nice when you wash them. So yeah, now time to mop. So it's not a cleaning product that just makes them smell nice. So you're just pushing some water around with some sambon on a fucking greasy floor. Wow. After I'm done mopping, I just use the squeegee on the clean floor to direct any excess water into the drain as well. She never even moved the garbage can. And whatever that can on the floor is, this is the most half-assed. Like, I don't even think she put the water all over the kitchen floor. This is performative for her video. How are you going to clean your kitchen floor but you didn't even move the garbage to clean under the garbage. What are you like? Do you take us for fucking morons? What the fuck? This is the most filthy cleaning job I've ever seen. Then I deodorize the kitchen from any cooking smells. And this is also from my uh, husband's business, T-Bell Dog. This All right, been. I'm fed. Everyone else is fed. Husband, pets. I hate her kitchen so much. Look at that cluster fucking. Imagine that's like a done kitchen. That's a freshly washed, everything in its place kitchen. You have like, you can even put down a, a chopping board there. I hate it. 
and laundry's going. The only thing I have left to do is just get rid of those little bits from the floor drain, which I will do. My back's a bit sore, so, but everything else is good. So now it's time for a little bit of me time and go and read some of the Quran. Okay. <sighs> She's about to go and have her me time and read the Quran. And I'm going to have some things to say about it. And I don't want to hear a goddamn word from anyone about Islamophobic or anything like that. A cosplay is a cosplay. I don't care who doesn't like when I call it a cosplay, okay? That's exactly what the fuck this is. This is a performance by a horrendous actress. If your religion, I'm just reminding, if your religion says that you're not allowed to judge this, my religion doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and judge, and you can go ahead and just not, okay? Okay. Hold on, hold on. I need to go back. I need to go back. <laughs> she took the time to light the candle. She lit the candle to read her Quran just to make it extra performative. Oh my God. This is her me time, everybody. So right now I'm um, on page 55 and part three is Sorel. You don't say. <laughs> Chantal has been in Kuwait. Well, besides her trip out of Kuwait, she's been there for 16 months. Just about 16 months. Y'all, she's on page 55. 55 of the Quran. That Quran looks so pristine. That looks like she just took it out of plastic wrap right now. Nothing she owns stays clean, neat, that white. No fucking way. She's never touched that thing before. <laughs> she, If she's benefit of the doubt, she's on page 55. She started reading that thing a couple of days ago to perform for someone else. God only knows. You know... She did go through an entire Ramadan in Kuwait. You know, one of the things that everybody is supposed to do during the Ramadan, uh, the Ramadan, during Ramadan, right? Is read the Quran. Read the Quran. They say, if you read the whole Quran and you get to the end and it's still Ramadan, you know what you're supposed to do? You start at the beginning again and you start reading it again. You'll notice people, for example, in your city, if you're from a big enough city, let's say, uh, during Ramadan, if you take things like the bus or the metro or whatever, you're going to notice Muslims are literally sitting reading their Korans. It's what goes on. It's what everybody does during Ramadan. Okay. So last year was her first Ramadan in Kuwait. She has tried to convince us all that she did participate last year in Ramadan. I asked the question, how in the fuck is that book so pristine? And how in the fuck is she on page 55? If this whole thing wasn't a cosplay and she was clearly not lying to us about what happened last year in Ramadan. Hmm? This is performative. This is a joke. She's making a mockery out of religion. And if this is it and she's just picking up the book now and getting into it, that's fine and that's great for her. But that means that, again, since taking the Shahada, she was lying to everybody. She lied to everybody during Ramadan. But you're not allowed to judge that, right? I'm not allowed to judge that. Sure. Al Bakara, and um, I'll just read you a little passage. Oh, you. A reminder again: nobody would be judging a goddamn thing if she hadn't chosen to make it content on her channel. She made her shahada content. She made content through Ramadan, lying to everyone. If she hadn't chosen to do that, I wouldn't have a goddamn thing to say who believe spend of the good things which you have legally earned and of that which we have produced from the earth for you and do not aim at that which is bad to spend from it though you would not accept it except if you close your eyes and tolerate therein and know that Allah is rich free of all needs and worthy of all praise so be grateful for whatever you have today don't think about the past don't think about the future whatever you have today that Allah has blessed you with think about it and really appreciate it that's what I get from that passage 
with Ramadan coming, I'm trying to get through the Quran and um, going to be doing a lot more studying of it during Ramadan, of course, as well, along with prayer and fasting. And I'll be doing some Ramadan vlogs for you as well. So, guys. Why would you do Ramadan vlogs for us, Chantal? You get mad when people judge the way that you're performing, and I do call it a performance, your religion. Why would you give the people the chance or the, the spot to even get in and judge it? This is supposed to be between you and God, right? You found God. This is all about you. This is not about the internet, not about YouTube, not about content. You don't need this channel, blah, 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 blah. If this truly is between you and God, why don't you for once make something sacred and keep it away from the internet? Do the entirety of, of uh, Ramadan. I'm not telling you don't do content, but we don't need Ramadan vlogs from you. We don't. What are you going to come out with your fucking poop gate scat loving freak incel husband and stand there uh, talking about Ramadan and fasting? We don't want to hear it from you and we certainly don't want to hear it from him. Shh. You already look foolish enough. Keep it for yourself. Um, I guess that's it. I like to sit here in this window, um, look out at the sea. So, guys, I just thought I would share a bit of my uh, every time I go to talk. It's always so weird to me. I accept the fact that everybody says that they haven't moved and they're still sky high in that building and stuff. But every time there's like a honk, doesn't it sound like they're ground level? It's amazing to me. Addicted to cold brew. Thank you for the super chat. So guys, I just thought I would share um, this morning with you. Not every morning is the same for me. Sometimes it's a bit different. But um, if you guys like these vlogs, please give it a thumbs up and um, leave a comment. I always love to hear from you guys. And inshallah, you will all have a blessed day. See you guys. Oh, a blessed day. I hate this version of Chantal. She really, really gets under my skin. So fucking fake. Ugh, again, do whatever you want, Chantal. Don't force it down our throats. It's hard to take that. Like, when people force religion down your throat, I, I hate it so much. But I am not taking it from you. <laughs> fucking the Antichrist is going to fucking force religion down your throat? I don't think so. No, 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 faker. You just keep it for yourself. Keep it off of the internet. Let Ramadan be sacred between you and Scatman, okay? Disgusting. Delulu, thank you again for the super chat. That bitch pissed me off. The interpretation wasn't even correct. Well, it's like she said, it's what it means to her. That doesn't have to mean that to anybody else, but to her, that's what it means. And that's what counts in her mind. Because, you know, me, Deidre, thank you for the super chat. She's a sick individual for mocking the Quran like that. Yeah, I think she just opened a random page. She doesn't understand what she reads either. That could be. It could just be open to a random page. Yeah. I also do think it's it's uh, very disrespectful making content like that out of, you know, reading the Quran, lighting the candle. It's just so fucking performative. I don't know. Ugh. Rabbit, rabbit sugar. Thank you for the super chat. The phoniness will backfire spectacularly. Inshallah. Hmm? If she's been going to a mosque, how is she on page 55? She hasn't gone to the mosque. I think the only time she ever went to a mosque was the day that she did the Shahada. It's Annie with an L, not Annie with a P. Thank you for the super chat. I think they're in the same apartment, but we hear traffic because she has to rely on the open window to cool. Ah, instead of the air. Okay, that makes sense. That does make sense. I just assume because it's her that every fan plus air conditioner is going 24-7. But yeah, maybe it's a budget thing. Who the fuck knows? Hmm, that might that does make more sense. Yeah. How many visa runs until they actually start investigating her? That's a great question. I don't know. I really don't know. Hmm. I wonder, was that the holdup in uh, Thailand? Maybe it's already started. I don't know. Oh, Frenchie doesn't stream on Twitch anymore. You're right. Frenchie hasn't streamed on Twitch in a long ass time, but we were just talking about it in the last live stream. We're about to come hard, come back hard onto Twitch. I made a little, a menu. I don't want to sound like shut down. <laughs> I made a little uh, schedule, let's say, for this foreseeable future. We're going to start this weekend. We will discuss tomorrow. But yeah, 
We're going to be twitching and tweaking hard as of Saturday. We have a lot of weirdos to catch up on and a lot of new weirdos to show you guys. I love new weirdos and I love sharing them with you guys on Twitch. It's such a good time. It's so intimate. Mm. Okay, y'all, listen, about Chantal, we are done for the evening. Whew, caught up in real time, I should say. Plus, we watched the ridiculous video from yesterday. Absolute garbage. Before we end for the night, <clears throat> we got to watch something equally ridiculous together. So the other night, if you guys remember, we watched Lushy filling up the little mini fridges for all the kids' bedrooms. And we were losing it. Us and everybody who watches Doherty Doesn't were losing it over the amount of candy and junk that she was stuffing these uh, fridges full of for these kids to have in their rooms. Okay. Some of these kids have binge eating problems. One of these kids had lost an, an, a massive amount of weight due to the bullying uh, or partly due to the bullying that he was getting from his mother's comment section on the channel because she never deleted those messages. Okay. It's sick. And she's just loading up their fridges with so much crap. Now, She's gotten a lot of shit over the past week for that. Like a lot of shit. Like shit like she never really used to get. A lot of people have turned on this woman. I shouldn't say turn, but it's like I used to watch her, right? A lot of people did. And then you start really noticing how sick we've talked about this before. It takes a while till you notice how fucked up the things in that house really are. Well, a lot of people have now been noticing how fucked up the things in that house really are. Her views are way, way down. And her comment section on that fridge restocking video is out of control. I've never seen her comment section like that. So many people really coming for her. So what does Lushy do? Does she do something to genuinely, like somewhat apologize to the audience let the audience know, guys, I hear you. It was stupid. It was a mistake. We're going to do better and then do better in a video. No, because that would involve admitting that you fucked up. And Lushy, just like Chantal, will never admit that she fucked up. Way too egotistical for that. So instead, Lushy made a little troll video. I can't play the audio because it's copywritten. But if you want to hear it with the audio, although it's just a song playing, there's no words to it. It's up on her channel, okay? We're going to watch the video without the copywritten music. It's very short. It was a short on her channel. So let me pull this up. It's called, again, uh, Mini Fridge Restock for My 11 Kids, okay? So she starts out by saying, like, I heard your criticisms in the last video about, like, all the stuff in their fridges. So this time, I took them all to the grocery store and let them pick out their favorite fruits and veggies, okay? Okay, at this point, I swear to God, I didn't even understand I was being trolled yet at this point. I thought, oh, great, okay, she actually heard, she took the kids, they go to the store. No, 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 no. Did you see that? So she starts by saying, H picked strawberries. So how does she serve the strawberries to a five-year-old? She just places three packs, three massive packs of strawberries or two, okay, into the kid's fridge. Unwashed, uncut, uncared for, no little containers, no little nothing. Here's just two massive containers of strawberries. So the next one, B, he likes watermelon. So just full ass tiny watermelons for the kid. Like how, what's a kid going to cut up a watermelon for himself? But that's not the point. The whole thing's a troll. Next kid picks a pineapple. Just an entire pineapple shoved into the fridge. Next kid picked lemons. Well, here's your fucking lemons. What the fuck? Oranges. Here's your oranges. Okay, that one I could kind of fuck with. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> There, dragon fruits. Here's your dragon fruits. Here's all the bananas. And we know she didn't pick bananas. Nobody in that family likes bananas. Blueberries. Tomatoes. And this. Oh, and apples for Jay. Oh, Jay, I'm sorry. Yeah, anger issues. Yes. 
and star fruits, she says for A. Why? Because he's the star of our family. The one who lost all the weight and she was getting extra criti criticized because of filling his fucking fridge with all those M&Ms. So she goes, star fruit for A, because he's the star of our family. It's so like passive aggressive bitchy. The whole little short is there's so much anger in a one minute video. I've never felt so much rage from a one minute video ever in my life. She's so angry. Yeah, she's taken the piss because of the comments, 100%. This is supposed to be like, oh yeah, well, I'm going to troll them. But the beauty of a good troll is that there's supposed to be humor behind it, not rage. Even if you're a little bit angry, you're supposed to be a lot more making a joke than doing something out of spite or tit for tat or whatever. This troll is done so angry from such a place of rage and like, I can't believe they're against me. She's got a lot of Chantal in her, you know, this troll, this was supposed to be a troll for us. Yeah. I don't fucking think so. This is no troll at all. This is her being an asshole. She doesn't think she did anything wrong with the fridge uh, restock video last week. She genuinely doesn't. That's why she doesn't accept the criticism that people had of the video. And that's why she did this stupid fucking troll. You're right. Nutrition. What a waste of money and fresh fruit. That, yeah. We know how that family, that house functions. They're not going to eat that fruit. That fruit's all going in the garbage and we know it. Uh, it is a bitch move, Sarah. Imagine. Imagine a bitch move involving all your kids like that. It's so fucked. She's so fucked. Listen, I have a feeling Lushy's story is going to get just, I should say more interesting, but in a way more interesting this year. There's going to be more of these passive aggressive moves, fuck ups in general, mistakes, like stumbles this year because the views are down and Lushy, she likes her views. So she's going to be trying some dumb shit. And I am fucking here for it. So every time she fucks up in any way or does anything worth a damn, we will be watching it. Oh my God. It's kind of funny you're talk taking this seriously. Well, are you not taking it seriously? There's no humor behind it. I highly recommend go over to her channel because of the copywritten music and play play the short for yourself. It, it doesn't feel like a joke. If it was a joke, great. I, I listen, I love a good troll. This one doesn't feel like a good troll. This feels like it's done from a place of anger, not a place of trolling. She's pissed off. She's genuinely pissed off, not only about the comments, but about the, the loss of views lately. Auntie Panda, thank you for the super chat. I was watching a random video. They go to the beach for the first time. There's a mosque on the beach behind the fart box. Uh, yeah, she knows it's there too. She had addressed it. She just, she doesn't care. She's not like interested. You know what I mean? Raven Autry, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. There are kids involved in this. Yeah, okay, dog. Great point. 11 fucking kids involved in this mess. I, I don't know. I don't think it's funny to be so angry making troll jokes like this involving all your kids. It's super fucked up. She doesn't give a crap about those kids. You're right. You're right. But they were her like key to unlock the door to social media. She's been trying to make it for a long ass time. She could never make it on her own. Her and Josh never took off her with all those kids did. So it's fucked up. You can, you know, I don't know. You can like Lushy. You can not like Lushy. You can disagree with what I say, but I think what she does surrounding those kids and exploiting those kids for her own, like online fame, if that's what you want to call it is really fucking gross. One kid's already left. One kid was so miserable in that house and being part of the content that they're gone. I don't know. How many of them do you think would like to leave? It's it's sad, you know? Very sad. Somebody in the comments had made a great, great comment under uh, the video of like last week, the candy restock of the fridge, saying so, like so many of the kids don't want to participate in the videos and stuff and they kind of hide away in their rooms all the time. And now she just made it easier for them all to all stay in their rooms even longer. Now they don't even have to come out if they're hungry or come out to get meals and interact with each other at all. They even have their snacks going in there. How sad. It's all about content. Yep. Yeah. Tragic. Fuck. What's going to happen? Again, I know we go on and on about this, but it breaks my heart. Those kids, you can't blame them. It's not the kid's fault. It's her fault. 
those kids are getting used to just being so goddamn spoiled. Everything is like just giving them, giving it to, ha- to them. Nothing. There's no consequences for anything. Nothing has any value, right? Okay. What happens when YouTube is done? What happens when that money runs out? And what happens when those kids have to start living like on planet earth with the rest of us? You know, it's going to be a real hard adjustment when she can't be buying their love the way she does spending 69 grand on Christmas and stuff. Yikes. You know, she set them up for a pretty bad heartbreak eventually down the road in their life, you know? And, and again, her views are dropping. It's part of what makes her panic too. She loves the seven cart uh, grocery shopping at Wegmans too. Don't think it's just about the kids. She doesn't want to lose that money. She's losing her mind thinking about losing that money. Drama Llama, thank you for the super chat. After the eight passengers who are her style of family content is coming under closer scrutiny, rightly so. I think it's great. I think it should. How can you involve your kids in this shit and just, there's there's nobody watching that shit, watching over this shit? Seems criminal. And I mean, it is, it can be, right? It's good that people have their eyes open more on these families and what's going on and what is and isn't exploitation. And I don't know how much of a kid's life should be shared online. Parents want their their, uh, I don't don't know, fame, their online fame or whatever. That's, that's fine. That's on them. But to involve the kids, that's pretty fucked. They, they don't make the choice. And in, in Lushy's life, in Lushy's home, we already saw what happened when a kid doesn't want to participate and is open and honest about not wanting to participate. That was unacceptable. And in the end, look, the kid is gone. So when it was proposed that, that uh, that one child not be in Lushy's content anymore. Allegedly, Lushy replied that, well, she doesn't have the time to put into editing to edit around that one kid all day. So it's really not about the kids. It's about the content. It wasn't about we will make it work. You know, you are a, a loved and cherished member of this family. We will make it work no matter what it takes. No, no, I don't have the time to put in to edit around that one kid. Yuck. So the kid was only useful to you when the kid was content. I think that pretty much gave it away, you know? Anyway, very, very sad. Like I said, we will be keeping an eye on Lushy. I have a feeling this year is going to get fucking out of control. Out of fucking control. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, y'all, listen, we are caught up in real time in Shantopolis. We are caught up on the Lushy tea. That means for this Friday Eve, we are all caught up in real time. And that's fantastic, guys. Thank you so, so much for being here tonight. I really, really appreciate it. Whatever you're doing with the rest of your nights, have a great, great night. Have fun. Be safe. Tomorrow is Friday. And tomorrow, like I said, we will be reliving the bloop. The night that was the BBJ rescue. AKA that deleted fucking rave stream where Chantal lost her shit and she was screaming, bitch, you have 24 hours, bitch. <laughs> I can't wait to, I can't wait to watch that with you guys. I've been looking forward tomorrow. All right, guys, have a great night. I'll see you then. Bye. Hi, ho.
Number one, I'm pretty, okay? That has a lot, and I, I don't mean that to be conceited. I'm being very matter of fact. Being pretty gets you a lot of privilege. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you can get away with a lot if you're pretty. Like how hypocrisy you are, oh my god.